Great. So um, there are a number of different MIGS or MIGS procedures available. MIGS, as we know, stands for minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. So these are essentially uh, surgical treatments quite often or devices that are inserted in the eye in an attempt to try and reduce the pressure within the eye. And in doing so, that helps to slow down and in the best case scenario, stop a patient's glaucoma from progressing. So there are a number of different devices that have come onto the market over the past five to 10 years. Um, and those can broadly be categorized into two main categories, one being angle-based MIGs. So these are devices that are inserted within the eye itself in the drainage angle of the eye and what we call a minor filtration procedures whereby a, a tube may be inserted from the inside of the eye out underneath the white skin of the eye or vice versa. So those are called filtration devices uh, versus angle devices. Now, if to give you some examples of angle devices, we have the eye stent device, which is made by a company called Glaucos, which has been around for a number of years with some excellent results. And that's a small stent in the drainage angle. There are the Hydrus micro stent. There are the Kahook dual blade. There's the Omni device. There's the Miniject device. So these are all examples of devices that can be used in the angle of the eye to try and reduce the pressure. Uh, in contrast, uh, filtration surgery devices can include the Presaflow micro shunt or indeed the Zen gel stent device as well, which are minimally invasive filtration procedures. So uh, in contrast to conventional, traditional treatments for glaucoma, um, MIGS procedures offer the benefit of being uh, minimally invasive, meaning there are less cuts in the eye, the, the surgeon has to do less in the way of um, disrupting the natural anatomy of the eye. And therefore that leads to a faster recovery time for patients and also uh, less pain and less post-operative um, discomfort for patients after having these procedures. Generally, mixed procedures are qu uh, quicker as well. So uh, patients can have the procedure done in a shorter period of time, and that again aids their recovery, which is quicker than conventional glaucoma treatments like trabeculectomy. So the main uh, benefits are uh, speed, uh, because it's minimally invasive, there's less pain and discomfort and less in the way of post-operative care that's required for these devices and patients. And so it has some clear advantages over conventional uh, surgery, such as trabeculectomy for glaucoma. So in terms of candidates for MIGS surgery, often these may be patients who have um, early glaucoma. They may be on one or two drops for their glaucoma control, and they may also have cataract. Um, so there may be someone who may be a candidate for cataract surgery. And whilst cataract surgery is conducted, we can perform a mix procedure, such as an angle-based procedure as well, at the same time. The benefit of which is patients are already there in the operating theater, and we can do the mix device, which takes just an extra few minutes. So overall, that's very, very beneficial for them. Similarly, patients who may be candidates for MIGS may be people who are intolerant or have number, a number of allergies due to a number of different glaucoma drops. And as a consequence, they, uh, they may not be candidates to have uh, other types of surgery and may not be tolerant of eye drops. And therefore, a MIGS procedure may be more beneficial for them as well. Finally, there may be a group of patients who, due to other conditions, such as uh, general health problems or other more specific eye problems may mean, or indeed age, may mean that they may not be a candidate for a larger traditional procedure such as a trabeculectomy, and therefore may be candidates for, for MIGS procedure. Yeah. So to summarize, early, pay, early glaucoma patients, patients who may be drop intolerant or may have allergies to drops, and the third group is due to other comorbidities or age, patients may not be candidates for conventional treatment and therefore might be candidates for the MIGS. So mixed procedures, uh, by their nature, tend to have a lower risk of complications compared to traditional surgery. However, with angle-based surgery, there is always a risk of a tiny amount of bleeding, which can occur in the eye. The benefit is that we can stop that very quickly. Um, the devices can cause some inflammation in the eye afterwards, which may result in some uh, light sensitivity or a little bit of discomfort, but that normally subsides with 
treatment with uh, anti-inflammatory drops. Similarly, there is a low risk that the pressure in the eye can become very low, but that, that can occasionally happen with mixed devices. And more commonly in, in the more um, filtration type procedures, there is a risk that scar tissue may form if a tube is inserted into the eye, and that requires careful post-operative management. The risk of scar tissue forming can in turn cause the pressure in the eye to go up. So it's a really good question and something that a lot of companies as well as academic centers have been looking to address over the past three to four years. We have some evidence now to suggest that some devices really do slow the progression of glaucoma because they maintain low intraocular pressure control for a number of years after installation. Um, there's some good evidence to suggest that the eye stent device reduces pressure for long periods of time, as does the hydrous microstent, in turn reducing the risk of visual field progression. With some of the newer devices, such as the Miniject device, um, there is less evidence over the longer term, but certainly the early evidence over one to two years suggests that the pressure remains well controlled. So there's a lot of work going on in all of these uh, areas at the moment to understand what real world uh, outcomes look like over the longer term. In terms of treatment effectiveness for a lot of these devices, um, I do find that they are effective at slowing down glaucoma, often for a number of years. It does very much depend on individual patients, however, and also depend on their initial pressure um, is at the, at the point at which treatment is initiated. Sometimes we find that the use of a mixed device can slow the progression down for a number of years, meaning that patients no longer require a second procedure uh, for maybe five or seven or even 10 years afterwards. And that's really, really helpful. However, in other, other cases with people who have particularly aggressive forms of glaucoma, even though they have a mixed device, that may only slow the progression for a couple of years. And that may mean they need an additional procedure further down the line. 